Good evening, and welcome to the Bison Information Network. I'm Logan Genneberg. And I'm Corey Hartle. We have a lot of news to cover tonight, so don't go away. Thank you for joining us tonight. While Ticketmaster is known for providing tickets to a wide variety of events, they've recently been receiving some backlash from customers. I took a look at how Congress is now getting involved with the company, and I was also able to talk to some NDSU students about how it affects them. If you've bought tickets online for an event, then there's a good chance you've used Ticketmaster. Last year, through the third quarter alone, the company sold over 150 million tickets to more than 30,000 events, everything from monster trucks to professional bull riding. However, last week, Congress held a hearing to see if Ticketmaster and their parent company, Live Nation Entertainment, have a monopoly in the ticketing industry. A lack of competition over time has corroded innovation and distorted the market. This really, really worries me because this looks like a way to, again, further leverage your market power in one market to expand it into other markets. And I just don't see how consumers win out of this exchange. While Live Nation and Ticketmaster merged back in 2010, they came under fire in November when they canceled the sale of tickets to Taylor Swift's first tour in five years after experiencing unprecedented demand. In a statement to her Instagram, Taylor Swift said, it's really difficult for me to trust an outside entity with these relationships and loyalties and excruciating for me to just watch mistakes happen with no recourse. In a press release from Ticketmaster, the business blamed bot attacks as well as unprecedented traffic levels on the site. However, Taylor Swift fans aren't the only ones who are upset at Ticketmaster. One NDSU student disapproves of the additional fees added on to each purchase. Nowadays, since everything is digitized, these service fees are just uh, a figment of the past, and they're simply added on because it was socially accepted, and it's a way to garner more money in your orders. And he's not the only one who feels that way. It would be nice if they could be more like transparent about what their fees are for, or if they're literally just trying to get a quick buck out of you. That's the part that really like just grinds my gears about it. But avoiding these fees can be tough for students wanting to attend events in the area. Both the Shields Arena and the Fargo Dome use Ticketmaster for their events. And for one upcoming concert at the Fargo Dome, tickets priced at $22.50 more than doubled to $45.08 once fees were added on. And while the Congress Committee will pass on some ideas to the Department of Justice, there's still no clear consensus on what should be done. One is for artists to have a say in those fees and for them to be lower. I think another solution might be maybe no exclusive ticketing contracts at buildings. So that the full ticket price is disclosed up front. If you care about the consumer, cap the price. While the Ticketmaster hearing concluded last week in Congress, no steps have been taken to reduce fees or break apart where many consider it to be a monopoly. So in the meantime, your plans to see Taylor Swift in concert may have to be put on hold. From Bison Information Network, I'm Corey Hartle. With the coldest weather winter has to offer, hopefully behind us, that means that spring is on the way. While graduation may seem months away, now is a great time to start looking for that dream career job. No need to worry, as NDSU has you covered with its annual Spring Career Expo. The expo will be held on February 8th, from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. and is open to all majors, area colleges, and even NDSU alumni. Not in the search for a full-time job? No problem, as the Expo has employers who are also looking for full internships and co-ops. To find out more about the employers who will be at the Expo, visit Handshake to see a complete list of all the companies in attendance. This past Tuesday, NDSU football held the meeting for walk-ons for the 2023 football season. The last time the Bison added walk-ons was in the winter of 2020 when they recruited four to the team. The walk-ons will have a trial practice this upcoming Wednesday at 6 a.m. where they will go through a workout consistent of cardio, general movement drills, and some position work to see if they have the potential to make the team. However, they will still have a long road ahead of them as they will have to make it through winter workouts and spring ball before the real deal in the fall. 
Are you interested in attending the career fair but don't feel ready? Well, next week, NDSU is hosting an event to help students prepare for the fair. This will be held Tuesday from 6 to 8 p.m. in AG Hill, room 300, and will feature representatives from companies such as John Deere and KLJ. HR staff and other employees will help students with developing a resume and building a LinkedIn profile. The event also gives students a chance to network with employers before the fair starts. The Paul's Campus Tour will be making a stop at NDSU in the Memorial, Memorial Union Ballroom next Tuesday. The event is sponsored by Crew and will feature a performance from Christian rapper Lecrae. In addition, Nick Hall, an evangelist speaker, and the dance crew Exiles will be there. The event is free and open to the public. Tickets can be reserved online. Do you have an idea but don't know where to get it heard? How about having those thoughts being turned into an opportunity to win prizes and maybe even some money? If so, you won't want to miss Idea Jam this next Tuesday from 3 to 5 p.m. in the NSU Library Computer Lab. Even if you don't have an idea, don't worry as you're still encouraged to show up. Whether you show up for all two hours or just 10 minutes, we guarantee that you will leave with a more entrepreneurial mindset and even some cool prizes. Tomorrow, the NDSU Learning and Applied Innovation Center begins their free software training sessions for students, staff, and faculty. Throughout the month, trainings on specific softwares will be provided by staff members, either online or in person at the Quinton Burdick Building. The trainings include workshops on Adobe Photoshop, Microsoft Excel, and Zoom. To see a full list of training sessions or to sign up for one, you can do so on the Training and Workshops section of the NDSU IT website. Reporter Jacob Morgan went across campus to ask NDSU students trivia questions for this week's edition of Bison on the Street. Let's see how they did. Welcome back to the Bison Information Network. Uh, we're back for another Bison on the Street. This time we're in the Union and I'm here with... Tacey Gilland. Caitlin. Cam Miller. Spencer. Can you name the only mammal that can fly? Bats, I believe. An owl. No, I can't. No? It's a bat. What is the only mammal that cannot jump. It's a pretty big animal. Very big animal. Elephant. I'm not sure. I'm I hate that the first thing that came to my head was rabbits. They're known for jumping. Um, hmm. Penguins? Oh, a snake. No, it's an oh. elephant. <laughs> a snake is in their own. They're reptiles. I'm really bad at this. So, uh, which mammal has the thickest fur? A polar bear? I would say... Like a bear of some kind? A bison. Wombat? No, not the wombat. Pretty close. Honey badger. No, it's a sea otter. Which mammal has the most powerful bite? It, it, it's in the cat family. I, I'm pretty sure of that. Um, bobcat? Mm, a bear? The hippo. I don't know, tiger? A hippo is the answer. And this last one's an open-ended one. What is the biggest animal you could think you could take one-on-one -on -one in a fight? Hmm. I'd say probably like a penguin. Biggest animal I could take one-on-one -on -one in a fight and win? Correct. Do I have any, j just hand-to-hand? No, just, -hand? just bare hand? Yep. Okay. Bare-handed, one-on-one. I think I could take a dog. Literally just a cat. I have the bone marrow of birds, honestly. <laughs> a chicken. <laughs> a chicken, that's it. The U.S. Air Force has gotten involved in the debate surrounding a proposed North Dakota corn mill by a Chinese company. The Air Force declared the mill a national security risk as the proposed mill would be within miles of Grand Forks' Air Force Base. The Chinese-owned Fufen Group paid $2.3 million to purchase the 300-acre lock just 12 miles from the air base. Many local officials and even federal authorities have warned that Fu Feng has deep ties to the ruling Chinese Communist Party and that they could be a major risk with its proximity to the base. Fu Feng would be the largest foreign private sector investment in the history of Grand Forks as the city claimed the plant would bring in over 200 jobs and millions in tax revenue if approved. It has not been hard to notice that the Fargo-Moorhead area has been rapidly expanding over the past years and this is a trend that will only continue moving forward. A recent demographic forecast by the Fargo-Moorhead Metropolitan Council of Governments, or Metro COG, says that the population could grow to over 350,000 as soon as 2050. This projection would add more than 100,000 people in the next 25 years to the surrounding rural and urban areas. But the best case scenario projects even higher, 
saying that the area could reach as high as 395,000 in 2050, an increase of over 58% from 2020. A beloved Fargo restaurant is closing for good after 52 years of operation. The downtown location of Mexican Village announced earlier this week on a post to their Facebook page that they would be closing the restaurant effective immediately. The 13th Avenue location will remain open in the meantime and current employees have been offered the chance to work there. While February is now here, community members still have time to enjoy Frostival, which is an annual series of winter-themed events. The festivities kicked off in January and will continue through the end of the month. A winter kickball tournament, a soup cook-off, and $5 sleigh rides are a few of the events going on this weekend. The complete schedule can be found on the Frostival website. Travis Dunn, an award-winning Fargo sports broadcaster for 740 The Fan and KFGO, passed away this Wednesday. He was 65. Dunn played hockey at the University of North Dakota and was a defenseman for the 1979-80 National Championship team. He would then go on to be drafted by the St. Louis Blues out of college. Dunn would also host Around the Rink, a show covering the area's high school and collegiate hockey scene, as well as pro hockey. For KFGO, he co-hosted Game on Hockey, where some of the biggest names and newsmakers in the sport were interviewed. He is survived by his wife Rose, daughter Serena, and son Gary. This Saturday, the Monster Jam Tour is back in town at the Fargo Dome for two shows. The competitions will be held at 1 and 7 p.m. and will each feature, monster, each feature eight monster trucks. Drivers will compete in multiple events, including races and freestyle competitions. Tickets range from $21 to $81 and can be bought on the Fargo Dome website. When we come back, we have two special guests from NDSU Saddle and Soreland Club. Stay tuned. kid deserves to go hungry, but try as they might, not every family can afford to put food on the table every day. That's why the Great Plains Food Bank and their partner agencies work every day to bring food to our hungry neighbors. Every dollar donated can provide four meals for those in need. Go to greatplainsfoodbank.org and donate today so no kid in North Dakota ever has to go hungry. My name is Becky Parker, and I'm a news anchor at WDAY-TV. I graduated from NDSU in 2010 with a degree in journalism, broadcasting, and mass communication technologies, and then I had an emphasis on broadcasting. Sure. Principles of broadcast production and advanced broadcast production. Those were favorites because they were the most relevant for career experience. You're calling people for interviews. You're writing an article. It doesn't just feel like an assignment. It's like actually doing it. I was the news director for the first full semester of the Bison Information Network. The bin advisor here was very much invested in me to actually have a career in broadcasting. He helped me get my internship and my first job. The people in NDSU's Department of Communication are really interested and helpful in getting students the connections that they need in order to get a job beyond school. The NDSU Bookstore, where every true fan and alum goes to get their pride on. Gear up with a variety of high quality t-shirts, sweatshirts, hats, and more. Made by top of the line brands like Under Armour, Nike, and CI Sport to help you show off your Bison pride. The NDSU Bookstore has everything you need in your two favorite colors, green and gold. Welcome back to Buy's Information Network. I'm here at Jade Kosky and Kel Helmuth of the management team for the Little International Show. Thank you both so much for being here tonight. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thank you. So the 97th annual Little International is coming up soon. Could you guys talk a little bit about what that is? Yeah, the Little International is a 97-year tradition, as you said in the beginning. Uh, it's a showmanship contest that was started by J.H. Shepard in 1922. Um, there was about four years missing there from World War II happening, but uh, since then we've been able to help hold a Little Eye every year. Um, it's the largest student-run organization and event here on campus, um, and we have just about 120 contestants this year, showing beef, dairy, um, sheep, swine, and goats, and then we also also have some ham curing and public speaking contestants as well. Okay. So how does the showmanship show work as a part of the contest? Well, as Jade said, um, there is this year we have five classes. So we have goats, sheep, pigs, and beef cattle and dairy cattle. Um, and so beef and dairy get four weeks or about a month to work with their animal. And so you have to halt to break it and everything. And then 
um, pigs and sheep and goats get about two weeks before the show. And so you just go out there, you go out there every day and they work with their animal. And then the ham curing and public speaking is also a big part of it as well, so. And these are all NDSU students that are, do, that are training all the animals and showing them? Uh, for the most part, it is NDSU students. We have a couple from Wapaton this year. Um, uh, it is open to the tri-college area as well, so. Yeah. Okay, so is this show something that the public's able to attend as well as students? Yeah, it is. Um, the night show is going to be at 5 p.m. It's going to be $5 to get in, and the morning show is at 8 a.m., So, and it's open to anyone who wants to come. So, so Jade, you're the manager of this year's event. What, what goes into that role? Uh, it's a big role. Um, I guess I oversee the many different committees. We have 36 committees that make up the preparations of Little Eye, and so I'm kind of the, the overall boss of it all, but um, I'm basically there to make sure that everybody's kind of doing their part and doing what they're supposed to, and then lining up a lot of different things that you know a lot of people don't think about. But um, for the most part, I'm just here to make sure that everything's going as it's supposed to. And then Kelsey, you're the assistant manager. Same question to you. What goes into that role? Um, I'm in charge of like all the animal side of it. So I was just, like assigning animals and making sure everyone has their animal and all the information is correct on that side. And um, I just kind of do every little things here and there, whatever Jade needs done as well. So. <laughs> So I'm assuming you guys have had some br some busy weeks too, and I'm assuming this next week will be even busier. What are some of the preparations that go into this? There's so much preparation that goes into it. We start in the fall semester, right? Um, the first week of school, we're already planning. Um, we vote on a lot of things. We vote on a theme. This year's theme is leaving a legacy. We vote on colors. Um, this year's colors were purple, tan, and teal. Um, and then we vote on our agriculturist of the year. This year we're honoring two people, Dean and Paula Swenson of Walcott, North Dakota, and so those are the preparations that happen a lot in the fall as well as the start of committee work. Um, when we get into the spring here we've got uh, all the animal work and then next week we'll have our big week of we start with arena cleanup and then streamer day and then chips go in and then we have football and the chips. So there's a lot of uh, small things that add up to make Little Eye what it is. So I've heard a lot about the streamer day, and I know you just mentioned it. Could you, could you talk a little bit about what that is for people that don't know? Um, well, streamer day, we hang streamers all through this roof and the ceiling of Shepherd Arena. And in total, I don't even know how many miles. Si it? It's over 60 miles. That's what I was wow. streamers. <laughs> So it's, we start at 4 in the morning and we go pretty much all day. Um, we try to break the record every year. I don't know if anybody actually has the, the time that it's taken, but we always claim that we beat the record each year. Um, but it's, it's a great opportunity for our club members to kind of get together and like make it a fun event, even though we're starting at 4 in the morning and going most of the day and night. So. Yeah. That sounds like quite the process there. Yeah. So I see that this event is put on by the Saddle and Sirline Club. So what, is, what does that club consist of? Uh, the Saddle and Sirline Club consists of anybody who wants to be a part of it. Uh, we're just a club basically trying to advocate for agriculture. Um, we do a lot of events. Little Eye seems like our big event, but there's so many different things that we do. We host kitty days every year during Egg Week where we get a bunch of um, preschool age kids in to come and see baby animals and stuff like that. And then we also do egg in the classroom where we teach fourth graders about egg stuff. We do Patty Drop, which is a fundraiser for families in need. Um, so Saddle and Sirloin is just like a club that's here advocating for agriculture, but there's so many different people from different areas of life, different majors um, that come together and we truly form like a family. Awesome. Well, thank you both so much for joining us tonight. I really appreciate it. If any of you watching are interested in attending this show, the Little, the little Eye Show will be Saturday, February 11th, with the preliminary showmanship round at 8 in the morning and then the finals at 5 p.m. But we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, Malik Mitchell has sports for us. Stay tuned. There are so many great things to experience at NDSU. It's hard to pick one, but my favorite is the people. They make it such a warm place. The bison aren't just across the country, they're across the globe. It's the perfect distance from home. The faculty are our biggest cheerleaders. Hands-on research experience. The affordable tuition. All the opportunities to stay active on campus. Real world learning experiences. Once I got on campus, it felt like home. My name is Addie Stewart and I graduated from NDSU in the Department of Communication in 2018. My degree was in Strategic Communication and I'm the Communications Specialist for the City of West Fargo. That includes social media, press releases, breaking news, interviews, media relations and more. 
I went into communication because I wanted to do something I was passionate about. There were so many opportunities. I knew I could work for nonprofits, government, small business, agency work. Professors in the department definitely impacted me a lot in my life, making sure that once I graduated college, I knew I could get a job here just because of the connections in the department and the great morale that was in Fargo. Future students should definitely come to NDSU because it's a degree like no other here. The NDSU Bookstore has everything you need to show off your bison pride. The bookstore can have you sporting green and gold wherever you go. It offers many different brands, sizes, styles, and selection so that you find exactly what you're looking for. Shop the NDSU Bookstore and show your spirit today. The men's basketball team is coming off an electrifying win at the Shield Center against UND. The two will begin trading points, but then the Bison will grab a tight lead for the rest of the first half. Forward Grant Nelson will rack up 24 points on 9 for 12 shooting in the first half alone. In the second half, the Bison scored the first eight points to go up by 15 and would later take the win 91 to 75. The Bison shot a season best of 55.4% with Grant Nelson finishing with a career high of 36 points. Currently 6-4 in the Summer League Conference, they are currently on the road in Vermilion, South Dakota to take on USD at 7 p.m. You can catch the game on Midco Sports 2 or ESPN+. For the women's, their comeback attempt would fall short after losing to the Fighting Hawks and the Betty Engelstead Sioux Center. Both teams kept it close in the first and second quarter. However, the Fighting Hawks took the lead 35-31 at the half. In the third quarter, they turned up the Heat, scoring 28 points, later taking the victory 82-73. Despite the defeat, senior Heavy Hamling had a comeback game, scoring 28 points, 7 rebounds, 2 assists, and 2 steals. Junior Abby Schulte followed behind with 12 points, 4 rebounds, and 2 assists, and freshman L. Evans had 10 points, 8 rebounds, 4 blocks, and 2 steals. NDSU will be back in action tonight, hosting USD. Tip-off is at set for 7 p.m. at the Shield Center. And lastly, the men's and women's track and field team traveled to Grand Forks last Saturday for the UND Open and dominated in several events. For the wins, they claimed the top four places in the 400 meter with senior Jacob Rodin winning, clocking a new personal best of 47 seconds. Jacob Levine won the 200 meter with an out indoor personal best of 21 seconds. And Drake Daniels won the 60 meter hurdles in eight seconds, tying his personal best, personal best time. For the throwers, the Bison will continue to win sweeping multiple places in two events. The Bison swept the top five places in the shot put with junior Cam Landis throwing 17 meters for the win. And for the weight throw, they took the top four places with graduate Trevor Otterdahl taking the win with 21 meters. And lastly, sophomore Zach McGlynn won the pole vault clearing four meters. And for the women's sophomore, Kendra Kelly tied the NDSU record in the 60 meter that was set in 2014, clocking 7.5 seconds to win that event. Nell Graham ran the second fastest 300 meter time dash in NDSU history, winning with a time of 38 seconds. And Salamata Corgo claimed the 60 meter hurdles in just eight seconds. For the field events, Grace Jimenez remains unbeaten in the long jump this season, winning her fourth straight meet with a jump of five meters. Senior Jody Lip led the Bison of a sweep with four places in just a triple jump, winning with a leap of 12 meters. And lastly, Deja Moss won the high jump, clearing 1.62 meters. Both teams will set the host the Bison Open on Friday and Saturday at the Shelley E League indoor track. Well, that's all I have for a Bison Sports Report. Now let's take it over to weather with Dash. Dash, hopefully it will continue. It won't continue to be this cold actually for the rest of the week. Yeah, it's been cold for the last couple of weeks, but thankfully the coldness and the Arctic freeze seems to be ending very, very soon. As we're going to take a look into the current conditions right now, it is mostly sunny with a temperature of negative 11 degrees with a feels like temperature of negative 30 with the winds coming out of the south at 16 miles per hour. As we look uh, into tonight's forecast and the hour by hour, it's going to be mostly overcast for the night with temperatures in the negative 15 to negative 20 degree range. As we look into the sky cast, the sunrise will be tomorrow morning at 750 AM and the sunset will be at 531 PM with a total sunlight hours of nine hours and 41 minutes. And as we look at the moon phases over here, we have the waxing gibbous phase currently, but the full moon is coming up on February 5th. 
As we look into today's almanac, today's temperature is a high of negative 7 and a low of negative 19. The average temperatures for this time of year are 19 degrees for the high and a low of zero. And for the record temps, a, high, a record high of 47 degrees, which was set back in the year 2000, and a low of negative 37, which was set all the way back in 1893. And they didn't have modern heating devices back then either. As we look at our current, uh, set, uh, current outlook in the country right now, there is a lot of Arctic freeze going on in North and South Dakota, as well as Minnesota and Montana. Meanwhile, in the South, it's also pretty cold all across Texas as well, with the only places reaching above 50 currently being in Florida and Southern Georgia. As we look at the rain and snow forecast as well, the remnants of the ice storms that have been hitting Texas, Oklahoma, and Arkansas move off to the east as the uh most of the southeast will be hit by rain, and it's pretty clear across the rest of the country at this time. As for my seven-day forecast, the uh, tomorrow will be six degrees for the high, negative 21 degrees for the low, and that is the last day of our cold, thankfully, before it warms up on Saturday with 31 degrees for the high and seven for the low, and on Sunday it will be 28 degrees for the high and mostly sunny. As we look at the rest of the week, Monday will be cloudy and 34 degrees, Tuesday, 26 degrees, partly cloudy, Wednesday, 34 degrees and partly cloudy, and Thursday, 30 degrees and partly cloudy. So at least the weather is finally looking warmer as this uh, week is coming up and as we hit the month of February. Well, that's all for weather. If you have any uh, photos of weather, you can send them online at www.ndsubin.com slash news. Yeah, Malik, I mean, you talked about the cold weather, but hey, it's finally getting warmer as we get into February, thankfully. Right. It's finally good to hear that we'll finally be having some good weather this weekend. Well, that wraps up our evening forecast. Thank you and have a great night.